a huge impact. Um, look, I, I, I'm one of the fortunate ones. I was here when it began. So Fred Mulder from Open University of the Netherlands was uh, the program coordinator, the academic coordinator, I think, the, was the first name. Um, and it's been remarkable because it actually set up a process of me being able to follow um, well, the research process with, with support, with um, some really invaluable insight, um, amazing opportunities, not just for travel, but for meeting people who are right at the forefront of this amazing innovation, this revolution in education called openness. Um, so it, it's done a lot. It's, it made me able to, to go out and actually speak about open very confidently. Um, to have a desire, a willingness, and, and really to maintain a passion for being in the open domain. So this is Goji N, and yeah, if anyone's out there thinking about joining, it's something that you should do. Hmm. I think that uh, the 2017 workshop, this one that's held here in Cape Town, um, it's my hometown, and I, I'm, I'm always, always pleasantly surprised to see the new people who come in and just the depth of, of what they are doing already and how, how involved and how sort of passionate they are about these things. Um, no one's here because they're out to make a big fat buck or a check. Maybe we'll make one buck. Um, but the point is that people are here to effect change, meaningful change in education and it's for the benefit of people. And that's what I love. GoGN has been just such a boost to me as a researcher in that early phase. Um, I'm the only researcher focusing on open education in um, Deakin University that I know of and certainly the only researcher in the research centre where I'm located who is looking at open education. I'm located um, on a scholarship studying full time within a, a group called Cradle which is the Centre for Research into Assessment and Digital Learning. So there's some big overlaps but nobody with quite the niche in open education. So it potentially could be very isolating. So the um, the GoGN network has enabled me to feel like I'm part of something bigger. So on an emotional level that's great, but practically there's people doing work with conceptual frameworks, with theorists that are in this area that I can actually communicate with and get ideas and bounce stuff off. And amazingly enough, one of the um, other network um, members who is in the States also doing his PhD um, we knew each other as practitioners in this space, long-term practitioners in this space and met in that area, found that we're doing this um, PhD in parallel and he's actually come on as a second coder in the systematic review stage, which means that I actually have someone to collaborate with on my actual research, um, not just the sharing of ideas but the practical doing and that has just made me feel so um, connected to the research in this area and um, it's made me not feel isolated in the open ed world and it's um, it's just uh, I think forming the foundation for some confidence to be a researcher in this area and to feel good about reaching out and asking for help it's been a really positive experience and the network I I'm new but uh, when I heard about it I went oh that's the thing and um, it's proved to be all of that and, and more coming to the um, coming to the sessions here with the symposium and having an opportunity to, to really dig into these uh, theoretical elements is um, just absolutely invaluable, so very grateful. So uh, I'm new to the Goji Network um, this year um, and it's been really exciting so far. Um, just being part of the network as distributed, we've had a chance to come together um, through webinars and through some of the uh, blog posts that have been on the website. And now being here all together in Cape Town has just been unbelievable, obviously, because uh, I get to hear about all the exciting research uh, colleagues are doing around the world at various stages of their um, PhD trajectory, some now finishing, which is very exciting, some like me that are just starting and can be inspired by those. Um, so it's been incredible. Uh, I'm, I feel like we need another day to think back about all the great stuff we've been hearing over the past two days. 
Um, so it's been a really meaningful experience for me and uh, there's been connections forged which I think will be very valuable for me going forward as I go back to my island um, but carry with uh, the spirit of the other researchers and uh, knowing that I have that network to rely upon. Uh, I can't say enough about how great it's been. It's been uh, it's been a rich experience, and um, and now we have a whole three days of conferencing to do. So <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to terms with how 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 I'm going to transition uh, into that, and I'm actually going to miss the intimacy of the the meetings we've had over the past couple of days, and feeling safe, really safe, sharing research uh, that's really emergent in most of our cases, especially for the new folks. So um, uh, yeah, we've been able to really share the journey, share our challenges and uh, and uh, support each other throughout that so I've I'm a new member of GoGN uh, I knew about the network before I even joined the Open University and I uh, got in contact and I I think actually it supported my application because I could talk about it at interview um, so despite being at an early stage I do think it's uh, a phenomenal opportunity to um, you know, kind of network and collaborate with uh, professionals and researchers from across the world, actually, different universities. For example, I've just had a conversation with a colleague who's going to put me in touch with um, uh, other researchers that she's working with who can give me some really good uh, advice on my literature review um, from a Kenyan perspective. So I probably wouldn't have got that without being here at this moment in time. Um, and secondly, I'm really fortunate at the OU in that we already have within the building um, a network of people who are doing similar or slightly similar uh, research. But I'm really aware that other people around the world don't have that opportunity. So um, it's just a phenomenal uh, opportunity to get together in wonderful Cape Town. Um, it has been nice uh, being part of GoGN. I've had the opportunity of meeting other PhD students who are studying in sort of similar areas and so and giving me an opportunity to interact with those people, just sharing my work and hearing also what they are doing and because we find that we may be just isolated because of this PhD may be sort of a, just really a lonely journey. So at least be, being able to interact with some people who may also be reading the same literature and you are able to share quite a lot. Like yesterday's discussions where we had that we could be, uh, we, we're just thinking we could be sharing our literature reviews, making use of the same, maybe sharing through our referencing systems that we're already using. So. Uh, frameworks and all that stuff so it's really uh, provides some support so you don't really feel you're lonely because in your institution maybe you're the only one studying anything to do with OER but now that you've got that family to sort of share with and also get some feedback makes it much nice. Well the first impact is on an incredible amount of happiness to be here I just I was so not expecting and just thinking that I'm going to be with 15 other PhD students it was just kind of so empowering for me um, and I think the opportunity to prepare for this has also had an impact in me because always when you tell your story about your PhD I think you get even more an opportunity again to reshape your thinking and whatever work you're doing so that's one impact the feedback I have received, not only in the session where we had the communal session, but um, in the in the when we have lunch or breakfast, the feedback I got this afternoon after my presentation was incredibly good because there is Anne, and she's working with Engerstrom's um, activity theory, and so we have now decided that we're going to set a between she and me readings and we're going to meet via Skype because she's in Sweden and we're going to discuss agency and how she looks at agency and how I look at agency and I'm thinking about maybe using a theory that is different and how can we both digest this theory which is quite complex and difficult and so if we set a reading group between she and me and maybe others who would like to join and we discuss that I think it's going to be very useful so agency would be a thing that we be 
seeing how it emerges and how we can put a finger on that, which is very difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, another impact it has had in me is I am looking for some advice. Um, my supervisory team is not, um, ec they, there is no expert in technology. So I'm looking at someone that could help me in a way in, in that particular area. And we're thinking about, can that be part of the alumni in the GoGN? Maybe that could just give me a guidance and say, well, maybe if you go this route or if you read this and this. And so I think that it's really just having that, that possibility makes me feel like I'm in a safe network and, and it's okay, whatever happens, you're just kind of, someone is catching you here or there or, so I think that is, it's, it's, it's you thinking, I'm not alone in this whole thing. There's someone holding me and, and it's not only one, it's the whole Goji and network. And I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Yes, I think that um, the other thing that I was thinking today after hearing all the presentations, it is very powerful to see how I think every one of us presenting in those two days have a critical stance on technology. And I think it, it in a way it makes you say, hey, it is worth speaking against the system and if anyone is not alone in this in this endeavor of praxis, emancipation, flourishing as, as part of what we want to do with technology, looking at the state of the actual and not the potential marvelous things, um, de, de, how do you say, fleshing out or um, kind of going against this digital native myth, I'm not alone here, so I, I have more strength to speak out and I'm not, I think that I have this it's like um, you are kind of in a, in a space where, where you make echo and it's nice to hear that echo coming back and forth and again it makes you, I think it empowers you and you, and you feel like I'm in a strong place and it's, it's, I'm not alone here and so I think that's another really impact that has had on me. And then the other thing, I'm not from England so I'm coming from Venezuela and um, I really, I came to England without knowing anyone. So I came, me and myself, and every bit of friendship, support that I add to my network is so valuable for me. So I think that's another thing that, in a way, I think, wow, it's bigger. Very good. Thank you very much. With regards to the impact of Gojian, in fact, I would recommend such a network to any PhD researchers. From the beginning, I was in the first team in 2013. The growth that I have experienced in terms of my research, in terms of my analysis and critiquing my students' researches, has shown that without Gojian, I would have not been to the level where I am in terms of understanding quality yeah, research, in terms of like understanding it. how to review and even give analysis, critical analysis that can improve quality of research. Therefore, GoGN is a foundation to all the PhD researchers, especially those who are very busy and those who are doing researches. We need such a network that can back up because of the expertise and experience we find in this network. The supervisors who also support us in terms of reading and correcting our work have a lot of passion, have a lot of experience and expertise in the area of open uh, education and therefore I recommend GoGN to any PhD researcher globally. In Africa this is one way through which we are going to boost our quality of researchers and I noticed through GoGN that the African especially the Kenyan researchers still we have a long way to go to reach the globally required quality of research that can even draw funders that can draw support and networks and collaborations in order to improve educational resources or learning through research in our country. Uh, what I would like to add is that uh, I'm very grateful for the team of GoGN. Uh, my first uh, appreciation goes to Fred Mulder, Professor Fred Mulder, who was the founder of this network, uh, really, and is my supervisor, he's my primary supervisor. Fred Mulder has a passion of uh, building quality of research, especially to the African countries. And this dream of Fred will only come to a reality if most uh, of the PhD researchers, especially those who hail from the African countries, join the network. 
that is something that I really uh, advocate for. Two, the network also uh, has transited from uh, Netherlands to the UK. The team in the UK is very motivated. I have met a number of very interesting team that came to Cape Town with the support of the Hewlett Foundation. And therefore, we are not afraid, we are not worried that it left the hands of the founder to the UK. The team is very motivated, they are very, very energetic, and they are out there to help the GoGN graduates to keep the dream of the network alive. So I found uh, the GoGN uh, network um, through uh, some ties at my home institution in 2015 uh, and was able to start engaging with the community at that time and it has proven profoundly uh, important in the kind of the, the makeup, um, the uh, refinement of my dissertation research, uh, finding topics uh, that would have traction, um, narrowing my focus and really honing what my projects would be. Um, Several different interactions have grown out of um, people that I've met in the network. Um, for instance, uh, in a course that I teach at my university, um, I hold uh, regular tweet chats with my students uh, around diversity and inclusion in online pedagogy, and uh, was able to invite and, and actually had some participation from other GoGN members uh, in, in that work, um, which uh, helped students not only uh, grow our conversation beyond our immediate course, but you know get some international perspectives uh, on the topics we're discussing, which has been excellent. Um, also been able to get some great feedback on drafts from other GoGN members, uh, sharing early versions of my work, getting some feedback, um, not just from other PhD students, but also from uh, the the people at OER Hub who have been willing to take a look at my drafts. Um, and just creating a, a sense of community that has really uh, helped me feel uh, a sense of belonging uh, as well as guidance and, and feedback um, that I don't get from my home institution just because uh, no one else is studying the open education in my immediate environment. Um, I was able to now link up with people who are in these realms. It's been a real huge asset to the progress of my, my doctoral work. Um, so I found out about the GoGN really early on in my PhD, about four or five months in, and I was fortunate enough to get invited to go to the Banff uh, seminar that was in 2015. Uh, at that stage, I was really early on into, into my PhD, and so I essentially went and I presented an idea of what I wanted to do, and I think that was an incredibly enriching experience, and getting feedback from not just the academics there, but students from all over the world and getting here to hear the different perspectives often from different disciplines or different sort of world views and so that really helped me in my first year in sort of shaping the direction in which my research will eventually go uh, and through the years between then and now I've sort of relied on the network to to share with me really interesting um, information and uh, uh, links to sort of interesting literature that has been released on the subject and there have been the webinars that I've been fortunate enough to attend where some really interesting topics have been discussed and I found especially the one that uh, was I, I forgot what it was on but the what was the one that Katie Jordan was on and they were talking about uh, I think open open practice in academics I found that, 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 that one specifically was really useful for me and of course now I'm in my uh, final year and I was fortunate enough again to come to the, the seminar in Cape Town and I think now with my research at this sort of almost final stage to, to hear more feedback about what I could improve on and um, you know just, just to get the feedback from different people in the audience it was really really useful and enriching experience. Okay, I joined GoGN about two years ago, and this is my first um, physical get-together with everyone, but it, as an online network, it's been really great for me because it was a way to, um, first of all, join the, the regular uh, webinars. I, I made contact with people who I didn't know were doing research in open education before, people like uh, Anna Algers, for example. Um, and really, I rely very much um, on my personal learning network um, for you know for information for connection for feedback 
and GoGN has been a really important strand of that. So I suppose part of that is because my area is open education, but also working on the west coast of Ireland. You know, I, I'm not physically at all the you know, conferences and events that I might like to be at. Um, we're kind of a little more remote you know, than people say in the UK, for example. So my digital networks are really important to me. And you know, being an open education researcher, GoGN has been, you know, has been a really important strand of that for me. And the experience of being here has been tremendous. So if anybody is watching this who is a member of the network and is thinking about coming, um, to this, you know, the annual seminar, I can recommend it wholeheartedly. Yeah. It was this experience of being at the at the GoGN seminar here in Cape Town has, has been tremendously inspiring, both yesterday and today. I mean, we heard um, is it 14 people altogether, 14 different PhD researchers at different stages from year one to year four beyond, um, and from you know from all continents. Uh, so I've never experienced that level of diversity around how people view open education, um, how it's practiced, what it means in different contexts. And, you know, there are some direct connections with my own work, but I just think in a larger sense, you know, just that whole kind of expanding the notion of open education and what it means in different contexts has been just really powerful for me. So I probably don't even know yet how that might, you know, simmer into my own work, but um, it's, it's been amazing. Okay, I love GoGN. I love the ladies and gentlemen in GoGN, and that includes the OER Hub team, but also all my colleagues who are doing uh, PhDs at the moment around the world. It's an invaluable community to be part of for so, so many reasons. First of all, uh, on a personal level, to feel less lonely or get rid of loneliness, PhD loneliness, which is often the case, and um, get uh, be part of a support network, which I have found extremely valuable. So coming twice now to, um, to the annual events has been um, inspirational. Inspirational, but also um, a useful exercise for confidence building, I think, and, and developing, I think, research capacity also, and, and believing in yourself. So I have, for example, last year I met my colleague Viv uh, and Jameson, who are here this year again and um, we stayed with both of them in touch so it's not just coming to an event but then creating these uh, very personal links uh, and opportunities to stay connected uh, which we have done especially with um, with WIF we have um, it has been developed into a friendship I would say professional friendship and we support each other on uh, on our PhD journeys but also other colleagues who haven't been here <coughs> at uh, GoGN through the social media network where it's promoted and the community is developing there I think as well which is lovely I've managed to connect with colleagues I haven't actually seen um, you know in, in real life for example Penny Bentley because we are doing um, we're using phenomenography as uh, our methodology for the project so it has been wonderful to connect with Penny, uh, share ideas, share struggles and challenges and how to overcome them. So it has been uh, an enormous bonus for me and a highlight of my PhD journey. And I actually don't know, I looked at my um, file when I actually joined GoGN and I think it was in 2015. So two years after I had started my PhD. And while I have recently said, you know, it was quite late in the journey. I think it's never too late, I think, to join GoGN because it's such a rich experience and um, the benefits are enormous for, for personal development, but also for, for making these connections with, with colleagues from around the world that um, I think PhDs, we need to actively look for these PhD students who are out there who are doing research in the open. Uh, and get get them connected so that the community can grow. And I've done that recently. There's a guy in the um, UK, Peter Shuki, who does very interesting work on um, community open online courses. Community-based open online course, I might not, I think sort of that's the title. <laughs> and he has become now a member, which, which is fantastic, uh, and other colleagues. So I'm, um, I'm promoting the GoGN family. <laughs> And uh, I hope uh, people will, will join, yes, because it, it, it's not just a wonderful thing, but I think together we can achieve more. And I get that sense that it's not just coming together, uh, sharing our work, but actually implementing and making change happen.
in a very uh, important field because we do know that education and especially I think open education is uh, extremely important for at the global stage I think and brings people together thank you <laughs> so I became a met I became a member of the GoGN network last year I was at Krakow at the OEC conference in Krakow and uh, was giving my presentation and Bea approached me and told me about this network which I wasn't aware of and it's such an exciting opportunity to be part of this network. In that year's time, I've attended several webinars, people presenting their research at so many different stages, early stages, late stages, um, completely finished projects in, in the open education spectrum. So I've learned a lot from those webinars and the opportunity to be here in Cape Town and to be part of this cohort that has worked together and presented together for the past two days has had an enormous impact on my research. I am I feel like I'm in somewhat early stages of my research right now and I'm still seeking literature that will help me describe what I'm trying to do, what others have done already. Open education practices are so new in the re in the research and the literature. I feel like I'm right, I'm getting the emerging hot off the press um, studies that are happening as part of being um, in this process in Cape Town and so this pre-conference session with GoGN has has had an enormous impact on what I'm thinking about and reflecting on going forward in my research and and I and I am certain that I'm finding colleagues and collaborators and critical friends who will look at my research as I go along and give me valuable feedback uh, because of their familiarity with such an emerging practice. The opportunity, the other part of the opportunity in GoGN is, is getting feedback and support and encouragement from more senior researchers in this area. So the, so the members of the OER Hub who are here and supporting and um, making this session happen is also an extremely valuable part of that for me. Um, and having a face-to-face -face session just to quickly talk about my individual research one-on-one, -on -one, extremely valuable to my process as well. I, I can't take it all in right now. I'm going to have to reflect a lot. But I also know and, and I'm certain that I have future contacts. If I have a question or I, um, I'm looking for some literature that I can't find, um, I can ask uh, senior researchers and, again, colleague practitioners who are all working on their PhDs.